your daily fix of women's mixed martial arts from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. Be in the loop because Golden State Media Concepts got you covered. Get your fix on women's MMA with Got You Covered on Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Right now, thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. I'm your host, Tate. And I'm your other host, Sarah. You always kind of hesitate. I know because I'm never sure. We have this conversation every time. I never know if you're going to introduce me or I just I just wait for the look. I just keep you on your toes. That way you know what's going on. Or you're prepared for what's going on. Or I don't know what's going on. <laughs> or maybe I should just let you lead. I don't know. Ah, okay. I so, don't know. <laughs> I got nothing on that. <laughs> so, like, it, once again, I know, first off, I'm going to apologize to the audience. It's been uh, a little while since we've had an episode and a lot has gone on. Uh, I've had a lot of issues. So, you know, I've had a lot of health issues. So been really affecting my uh, performance lately but that should be almost behind me so i i hope so <laughs> yes no crap now uh hopefully we'll start doing this show on a much uh more regular basis that would be lovely yeah because then we could we don't have to cover you know everything under the sun and tr- or try to in one episode yeah i kind of agree so and then as i come back and i'm i'm all excited to do the show I was still late today. Yes. <laughs> you, and you know why. I, do. I I was glued to the TV cuz I could not pull away from the OJ probation hearing. You know, you could have come to the studio and watched it. I I was watching it, but I was here. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I know it has nothing and you know, I'm just just talking just in general. It has nothing to do with women's mixed martial arts or anything, but man, I was just, you know, it's been how many years since the original OJ trial? I think they said 1995, mid 90s though. And it's it in it still like grabs so many people. It's so it's one of those things where yeah, you you it's that train wreck that just keeps happening and you just, you know, have to find out what what's the next saga uh in it. It's turned into this this long soap opera. I mean, what's the first thing you think of when somebody says the phrase white Bronco? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe not for younger generations. They don't think that. But I, you can't just say, oh, look, there's a white Bronco without thinking, oh, you know, police chase. The last thing I think about is a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I sure as heck do not think of a horse. I didn't think of it until you brought it up. <laughs> so you don't even think about a Bronco as a horse anymore. No. Uh, so what we're talking about is that OJ ended up getting uh, probation, uh, which is, you know, you know, this is not the place to talk about whether you think he should have got probation, whether he did it or didn't, did not. It was just one of those things where. No, it's just a fact. He yeah. was approved for probation <laughs> sometime in October. Yes. And I could not, you know, I was, I was going to go, I was watching every minute of the, you know, his testimony, what the. Well, how what, crazy is it that you, it was even on TV? I mean, how often do you see a parole hearing? on television yeah, especially Billy, on espn billy bob's uh parole hearing is not gonna make cnn or espn you know and i don't know why billy bob always gets in trouble <laughs> and he has to be on parole <laughs> <laughs> but billy bob's you know pro hearing is not gonna happen not gonna be on there no so all right so <laughs> maybe we should talk about you know the, it's, it's the women's mis- mixed martial arts podcast maybe we should talk about women in mixed martial arts and oj is definitely not a woman <laughs> nor does he participate in mixed martial arts you know but i bet you a lot of people would too you think mcgregor uh 
Mayweather, McGregor versus OJ. OJ seventy. <laughs> That's a terrible matchup. You, you think that you talk about a circus? I mean, I'm take, Mayweather's I'm, forty, and everybody's talking about how old he is. OJ is seventy. I'm sorry, that would break all kind of records. And especially if he knocked May, uh, McGregor out. I mean, <laughs> how bad would that be for McGregor's career? That's it. You know what? No, we're changing this around. OJ versus Cyborg. Because we got to make this a women's mixed martial arts event. That's the undercard. It's going to be May- McGregor, Mayweather. Uh, and then the undercard is is OJ versus Cyborg. That would pay off all his debt. You know, this is why no one comes to you for show ideas. Because <laughs> the, a couple episodes ago, which was several months ago, you, you were putting together Chop Champion with uh, Tom oh, that's Evinger, right. Paige Van Zandt, uh, Big Country, and somebody else. But... Tell me. A, a big, uh, Black Beast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me you wouldn't turn tune into that. <laughs> Matter of fact, you brought it back up, and I'm like, I'm ready to watch that right now. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you're in the wrong, the wrong profession. You should be, you should be pitching show ideas. The worst shows of all time. They'd be on like the. You need the Tate Network. Oh, with two viewers. <laughs> what you and me? <laughs> oh wow! Thank you for showing. I thought I was talking about my mom. That's the only person I thought would actually support me on Aww, this one. Mom. <laughs> All right. So what do we have going on here? We have a lot going on, as you know. I mean, there's been a lot happening in the world of women's MMA. Last time we talked about uh, the cyborg Tanya Evander fight, and we might talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, Jermaine Durani is actually back in the headlines a little bit. She has a fight coming up. Okay. Do you want to talk about when the fight is, and then I'll go, I'll yes. jump in, or so I don't want to cut you off. She is scheduled to fight uh, Marianne Renault on September second. That's UFC in Edmonton. So coming up in just you know like six weeks. And she's back to her original weather uh, weather class. Weight class, <laughs> weight that class. would be. <laughs> this is what happens when I, I read the word featherweight and try to say weight class at the same time. It comes out weather class. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start off by saying, and, you know, when you start off by putting the kind of like a little caveat there that I have always been a big fan of Jermaine Duranamy a big supporter, Jermaine Duranamy. But this whole thing that went down with her as uh, the the featherweight champion, and, you know, first off, it was a controversial win against Holly Holm, which, you know, you could say, you could, you could really make a strong case that Holly won the fight, especially if you take a point away for those late hits at the, after the bail. Right. Then, so you you win the title in a controversial fashion, and then you kind of disappear, and you refuse. Okay, first off, when you decide, when you signed to fight Holly Holm for that for that title, you knew the very next fight was going to be who? Well, they they did uh, somewhat talk well, about a rematch, but. It's Chris Cyborg. Right, everybody yeah, knows they, I was that. Getting the, there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Everybody knows that division was created for Cyborg. Right. And so whoever won that title was going to fight Cyborg, and then for her to take the stand that she did not want to fight Cyborg, the fact the way she disappeared, um, I, I mean, and if you listen to the show, I mean, Jermaine. I've always supported you. I'm a big fan, but I'm just speaking the truth. I lost a lot of respect. Um, and I also thought the UFC was 150%. It's, it's rare to get to 110, but 150% right to strip her of the title. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was the right decision. It was. And just... <laughs> I don't even know. For me, it's the fact that she just disappeared. And it's also the fact that she then came out and said she didn't want to fight Cyborg when she had to have known that they were going to put her up against Cyborg when she's, you know, she's she's signed a contract saying she will fight who they 
put her with, but then to just disappear and not make any statements whatsoever for months. At first, it's a hand. It's all this stuff. Right, there's all this speculation. And then she comes back and then she's like, no, I'm not doing it. Um, not only that, um, she knew it going into it. If you were, if even if that was your game plan from the beginning, the minute they, they announced the fight, they were all asked about Cyborg. I would have, you know, if you're going, if someone's managing her and, and, and she, they know she has a stand that she has no interest in fighting Cyborg. And let's just say it's a legitimate reason that she thinks uh, Cyborg has taken performance enhancing drugs and has gotten special treatment uh, and, the, you know, has gotten has received a pass, then you should have been saying that from the beginning. You should have made it very, like, known from the beginning that, you know, you don't think the Cyborg deserves to have the title shot, uh, that the true, you know, the true featherweight title is here. Not with, you know, the person who you think is cheating. There's a lot of ways that, you know, instead of saying, you know, when it's when by controversial decision over Holly Holm and then they ask about Cyborg and she's talking about getting her hand checked out, even though, you know, she just fought with the same hand. Uh, it just looked, it looked bad. It was very bad form. I, you know, I... Matter of fact, I feel like they should give her the title again just to strip it. <laughs> <laughs> well, even her statement after she did finally come out, you know, after they stripped her title, because she didn't say anything until really the comments about Cyborg, yes, but she really just kind of disappeared. And then after they stripped her title, then she did make a statement on social media. And even that was sort of like, oh, well, you know, I might be done with the UFC anyway. Things are, you know, like, I don't know. It was just very... Very, it was a very strange attitude, it seemed like. Now, okay, here's my question to you on this one is, let's say it's uh, Marion Renault, mm -hmm. and she goes in, and let's just say she just rips through her. Let's just say she looks spectacular, unstoppable. Do you even, does the UFC even consider putting her in a title shot contention in any weight class. Duranami? Yes. I think she would definitely have to fight her way back up. I mean, I don't you know what, better, you know, I I don't think she should have it anytime soon. You know, and I agree. You know, I don't think let's say she went on a three fight winning streak or a four fight winning streak. It wouldn't be enough. She would have to win. She would have to come across like Eight, nine, ten fights in a row just dominating people. I would pass her over every chance. And and I mean, and this is coming from someone who's a fan of hers and mm -hmm. was, I always thought the person that could give Cyborg the biggest test in the UFC was always Jermaine Duranamy. I, I had two stands when it came to Cyborg and the best opportunity to, to uh, upset Cyborg. I thought Jermaine Duranamy because of her being under the radar, under the radar, she's a, you know, she's one of the most decorated uh, fighters outside, of, you know, and combat history. I thought she would be the one of the persons. Another one was I thought was Megan Anderson, and you know, Megan Anderson also disappeared in kind of, uh, you know, which weird circumstances. She said she had some personal things, and you know, I respect that. Megan has made no mis no misgivings about wanting to cy fight Cyborg, so I'm a, I'm gonna give her I give her more of a pass than I give uh, Jermaine Duranamy. But I always thought those were the two fighters that could ha that had the best shot against her. Um, we'll talk about Tanya Evinger in a second, you know, and that's my that's my little uh, MMA crush. Uh, <laughs> I mean that in a platonic way, but you know what I right, mean. Right, right. Uh, what's your thoughts on what I said? I know, you know, you've, you've never made no, you've never made any bones about the fact that you thought those were the two fighters that would best take on Cyborg. It's interesting that now they've both been scheduled and they're both, you know, neither yes. of them are going to fight. It, <laughs> it, that's just been a crazy, a crazy series of events that has led to the Cyborg Avenger fight. But let's, let's go back a little bit, you know, instead of talking about all this kind of background stuff, do you want to talk about the Duranami Renault fight. I mean, how do you see it's in terms of their record? 
Duranami is seven and three, whereas Renault is seven, three, and one. So they're very well matched in terms of their record. What do you think in terms of their fighting well, styles? Well, I mean, as I as I just said, um, Jermaine Duranami is one of the most decorated fighters in combat history. Uh, you know, a, a long history of you know boxing, Muay Thai. She's She's, you know, her and Holly Holm are two of the, are, it's just, when you look at their entire history, they're Hall of Famers. Uh, maybe not UFC Hall of Famers, but, if, you know, combat Hall of Famers, both of them are in the Hall of Fame. I don't see, if, if, if Jermaine Duranamy has her head on straight and she can withstand a lot of the media backlash and a lot of, you know, even like what I've given her. Uh, there's a lot of people that feel kind of the way I feel about her. She's going to get a lot of questions as her fight uh, comes closer. If that becomes a distraction, then she could, you know, you could, she could definitely slip up. But if she's focused, I, I just, I think it's a good fight to get her back on track. And I could definitely, I mean, I would definitely take uh, Jermaine Duran and me to win the fight. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the way I, I take it it's just I just have I've just never and you know I haven't I haven't seen a healthy scratch where a champion has given up the title to not fight someone I, I think uh, I think back to boxing when Ruddick Bowe gave up his title to not fight Lennox Lewis that's the last time I can think of a champion that just you know was a healthy you know, sh scratch or healthy retirement, you know, and I'm a, I'm a big boxing fan. So, mm -hmm. and I, I know you don't follow boxing Not quite much. like I do. Right. So, so that concludes, is there anything else you want to add to that, to that topic? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I like Marion Renault as a fighter, but I, you know I, I didn't even ask you that. I mean, I didn't mean to cut you. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't ask who do you, when you look at this fight and you say, this is a fight, this is the next fight coming up. Who are you taking? I'd still take Jermaine, but with that caveat of what you, you know, what you were talking about, unless things really get into her head, which I suppose is possible. There could be a lot of pressure and on her. Marion Renault could benefit from that if she also keeps her head in the game. And Marion and... Renault is no slouch, right? Uh, so I could definitely mean, uh, you know, Marion Renault is definitely capable of winning the fight, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. But uh, I mean, especially with the the added questions you know when you when you have a fighter that you know being stripped she's gonna ha i think jermaine duranum is going to have something to prove mm -hmm. she's gonna have a chip on her shoulder and sometimes uh when fighters have a chip on their shoulders they tend to press and try to do more than what they're what they traditionally will do and they'll get outside of their game plan especially early in the fight and that's when people can get caught right uh, and so uh, that's why I definitely give uh, Marion Renault a, a true shot. I agree. All right. So this concludes our first segment here, which we're talking about. Um, what about Jermaine Duranamy? When we come back, what are we going to be talking about? We are going to be talking about Amanda, nu Amanda Nunez and Valentina Shevchenko. Very good. All right. When we come back, stay tuned. We'll be back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
All right, we're back, and uh, we just got done talking about Jermaine Duranamy and her upcoming fight, and all everything that led up to her uh, being stripped of the title. Um, I'm gonna say before we go to the next segment, the last thing I'm gonna say about this is, you know, I really respect Jermaine as a fighter and what she's accomplished in the past. And so, I, you know, I'm not really trying to make her, you know, to really put a, any bad light on her career or anything. I just, this this is one of those, this is a, definitely a bad spot in her career. Uh, but I, I do appreciate what she's accomplished in the past. Uh, so I just wanted to say that part as well. Okay. What's next? What's next? Well, we, you know, haven't been on for a while, as you know, since you have not been feeling the best. Um, but so we didn't talk about UFC 213, which 213. was the third year in a row that the main event at the UFC, the, at the at the fight. Ah, why can't I speak? International Fight Week. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was uh, canceled or, you know, had to be changed at the last minute. The third week, third fight in a row that the main event for the UFC for International Fight Week was canceled. Um and last year, you know, it you know that ended up being uh John Jones versus Daniel Cormier. But at least which, they found that out a couple weeks before or you know several no, it day, was, several days at least before. I mean, it wasn't this several, was yeah. the morning of. Yes. Well, this was, they you know, the this, weigh in. this was almost as close. This was like the day before. I mean, like uh, two days before. I mean, it was it was close. It was because uh, Anderson Silva came in with like a day's notice. Right. He got he like I think I forget how much time, but he was in Brazil. He went from laying on the couch, you know, you know, sipping on a pina colada, to flying, you know, flying to New York to fight, you know, Daniel Cormier. And, you know, that was a crazy situation. This was also also, uh, equally as crazy. Right. So they weighed in and everything looked like it was going fine. And then Amanda Nunez pulled out. She said she uh, due to sinusitis. Now, the doctor said she was medically clear to fight. And I can see this from a couple of different sides. Um, You know. Uh, many people might think, you know, sinusitis, okay, whatever, get over it. <laughs> people fight with broken hands. They fight with all kinds of things. Now, as a person who has suffered from sinus infections and had sinus surgery, the last thing I can even contemplate is getting hit in the face when I have a sinus infection. But on the fifth or sixth or seventh hand, whatever I'm on by now, I'm not a fighter. So, oh. you know, I'm not trained to fight through all that stuff. So there's a lot of different aspects to this. And... And uh, on, on the seventeenth hand, she has to she has to watch out for her own best interests. That's where I'm going to jump in. I am actually happy that I wasn't on the air when this happened, because when I first heard about this, I was not happy. I mean, I really wasn't happy, I, and I'm like, this is this is just as bad as uh, Jermaine Duranamy. Uh, this is, I mean, I can't believe, uh, you know, sinusitis isn't like a sinus infection. Uh, you know, I, th- I thought what, I mean, especially after weigh in and I didn't think she, I mean, she was, she looked good at the weigh in and I thought Shevchenko looked amazing at the weigh in and every, and, and everything leading up to it. Uh, Shevchenko was ready. I was, I was truly disappointed in Amanda Nunez. But I wasn't on the air. And that would have been my take if we'd have been on the air. And this is one of those things like they say, you know, if you have a thought, don't jump on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and set your your thoughts out there right away. Because as I started thinking about things and I, you know, I started going through and I went back and I looked at a, a Amanda Nunez on at the weigh in and I remember seeing her eyes looked a little like puffy and a little red. And then I started thinking about things and I, and I'm like, you know what? Good for you, Amanda Nunez. I think she made the right decision. And this is the reason why when, when you look around 
Amanda Nunez is the bantamweight champion, uh, women's bantamweight champion of the world. And she's fighting a woman who had taken her, she had taken her to, uh, you know, to the third round and their first fight in which the last round and a half, Shevchenko was taking it to her. This, there's just, there's just a little, you know, a little tweak here, a little tweak there. Shevchenko wins the first fight. So you're, when you go in there and you start thinking about you have sinusitis, you're not at your best, but the UFC wants you to fight. Uh, and so you go in there and now you're not quite at your best. You're that little, that little tweak differentness now. And so with sinusitis, one of the things with, with Amanda Nunez is the fact that uh, stamina has been an issue. Mm -hmm. When you have a sinus issue, that's breathing. That's one, that's one of the issues where now instead of it being a three round fight, it's now a five round fight. Is it in her best interest to not to step in a ring with a woman that's already taken her to the limit when she's not at her best? I say, no, don't do it. And this is the reason why you don't owe the UFC anything. Uh, and, and, and what I mean by that is when Jose Aldo fought Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo was the champion for a decade. He got knocked out. Would it, you could say by a, a fluke knockout, he didn't get an immediate rematch. You know, when, you know, when, when you think about Robbie Lawler, who was the, the ultimate bloods and guts champion, when Tyrone Woodley knocked him out, he didn't get an immediate rematch. Eddie Alvarez with Conor McGregor, uh, you know, just go on and on and on. There's been so many champions who have taken, who's gotten in the ring and they lost their title and they didn't get immediate, immediate rematch. Dominic Cruz doesn't get, didn't get a, you know, a very close fight, but he didn't get an immediate rematch as well. So. You have to, if you're the champ, you got to look out for yourself because the UFC is not going to look out for you and give and put in a contract that you get an immediate rematch. Uh, so knowing that traditionally and in, in, in recent times, the champ, if the champ loses, he doesn't get her, he or she does not get an immediate rematch. If I'm not at my best and I've already fought a woman that can take me to the limit, I'm not stepping the ring until I'm ready to go. I'm with you, Amanda Nunez. And, you know, Dana White's response to this was that he's not going to put this this title fight at a main event again, that he doesn't feel like she, you know, she deserves that after this. He said he thinks it's 90% mental and 10% physical. So she's already gotten some backlash on that. You can see that there's not a lot of support. But think of how much worse it would have been had she fought and done very poorly, you know, or even even done well but still anything could happen she's that then she her reputation is going to be even worse with the ufc they're not going to necessarily stand behind her as a fighter well first off um dana white has said a lot of things in the past that's kind of like saying that he would never have women in the ufc and i know everyone's tired of hearing that that brought up but there's lots of things that dana has said right you and know, like there's... you he reacted in the moment maybe and yes. you know he may react differently now it's not known if their next fight will be uh, you know on the main event but well you know the other thing is another thing that everyone is beating up on uh, beat, uh, that did beat up on amanda nunez is she was medically cleared well, <laughs> if you ever see some of these doctors, I mean, there's been cases where people have had broken bones, bad knees. And I think there was even a case once someone talked about uh, on Twitter where a woman that was pregnant got med medically cleared. What? Once. Uh, and, and I don't I don't have I'm just saying what someone said on Twitter, uh, <laughs> but I don't put it past, you know. I don't put it past an NFL doctor. I don't put it past a UFC doctor. People get medically cleared for lots of reasons. These doctors, a lot of times, their best interest isn't the fighter. It's the it's the organization. It's the can this will this I mean the ability to save the event. 
kind of comes before fighter safety. Um, and so I don't necessarily say, oh, just because the doctor cleared her, uh, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, and what here's, here's a prime example. When Ferguson was supposed to fight Khabib uh, Namega Manoff, always have a tough time with that one. But Khabib, uh, he was having a hard time with the weight cut, and he went to uh, he went to the hospital, and Dana was not happy about him going to the hospital. That he Dana wanted him to see their doctors because their doctors could have gotten him taken care of and got him cleared. But if he went to the emergency room. There was no way a doctor at the emergency room was going to clear him for that for that fight because the doctors at the emergency room is only thinking about what's best for the patient where the ufc doctors are about the ufc and what's best is this person able to put on a fight it's not is this person able to put on a fight at their peak best or to to you know to really perform at, you know, perform at a level that's, uh, you know, that they're accustomed to. It's about, can this fight go on to save this? You know, this is a main event card as well to save this event. That's the reason why Amanda Nunez made the right decision. I know it's not popular to say that, uh, but I'm on your side. So segueing a little bit from the, the medically cleared. Uh, I'm on my soapbox, by the way, here. <laughs> well, you know, you, you're feeling tall today, so <laughs> up on your soapbox. Uh, I need a bigger soapbox because I'm much shorter than you. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> um, so segueing from the medically clearing stuff to, uh, it's not a smooth segue. I'll just put that out there. But one thing I found very interesting is who knocked on Dana White's door that morning to say she was willing to fight day of. Okay. I'm, I'm going fangirl over here a little bit. It is, you know, and I can't believe I get on my soapbox so much that I didn't bring this up, you know, and a lot of everybody knows, but Joanna Jo Jacek decided that she was, she would, she was open to fighting Amanda Nunez. Uh, she was going to fight at 135. Uh, she said and that she was, could make weight. She was ready. <laughs> let's do it. The woman is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I would have been against her doing this, but she was, she was, she was warming up everything. The only thing that stopped this fight. Mm hmm was the you know the athletic commission that's the only thing that stopped this fight from happening right, it was going to happen commission. now here's the funny thing even though i already know that they have fought before and that's at Mu and muay thai it was never on the radar as far as a fight that could happen now you're talking about a super fight i'm gonna give you my christmas uh my Christmas list and at the top of my Christmas list now your Christmas in July list Christmas in July at the top of my Christmas list do you know what that is now do you want to see this fight what, what do you think is at the top of my Christmas list that's what I'm saying that you want to see this Yo Jacek Shevchenko fight no Cyborg and OJ <laughs> <laughs> and we've circled back around no, no. Uh, <laughs> yes this fight if Shevchenko was to win. I was just going to get you socks, by the way. <laughs> if Shevchenko was going to win and she wins the Bantamweight title, you could see those two fighting at the flyweight, at a flyweight catchweight because Shevchenko is a, is a small Bantamweight and really should be fighting at the flyweight level. Um, Joanna is a big straw weight and she'd be fighting, fighting at the straw weight. These two fighters could be both champions in those two divisions and fighting at their natural weight at flyweight. And that would be a fantastic fight. Well, from your lips to uh, not God's ears in this case, but to, you know, the matchmaker's ears. Yeah, that would, it's, it's a fight that's now on the radar because, you know, because of the fact that Joanna was going to take it on less than a day's notice, she was ready to go. Uh, and that would not have disappointed.
I'm going to say something that is, I don't mean it to be condescending at all. I just think Joanna is adorable. And I mean that in the <laughs> nicest possible way because she, and not adorable because she could totally kick my patootie. I mean, from here to Okay, Kansas wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's, I'm, gonna ju- I'm like jumping the in. the most down-to-earth person on the. On this podcast, you just used in one sentence, adorable and, and patootie. patootie. I know, because I was trying to keep it clean and not say, you know, another uh, well, word for my rear end. All right, well, I'm going to say this. Joanna Jocek, Jocek is bad ass. Okay, see there. And she would <laughs> kick my ass. But what I mean by adorable is that she just seems like a nice, down-to-earth person who's doing what she loves and willing to do whatever she needs to, to continue doing what the she loves. The woman eats, sleeps, makes martial arts. She's training all the time. She is super focused. Um... I'm so impressed by her. Um, she's about to one fight. Is it this fight or the next fight? About to pass Ronda Rousey for. She just tied, so it's so just... so the next fight. Is she? That's even better. You put Shev, if Shevchenko was the win, Shevchenko versus. I uh, it wouldn't work because you, she would have to t- defend her title. Uh, I was going to say, and that that would just be an amazing situation of Shevchenko versus. Uh, Joanna for Joanna's title, but the woman is amazing. Uh, like I said, she eats, sleeps, drinks, uh, mixed martial arts and training. Uh, she's just amazing. I, I would have loved to have seen that one. And we could talk about Joanna all day because, you know, she is amazing and we think she's fabulous. But we were talking about the original fight, which was Amanda Nunez and Valentina Shevchenko, which is been rescheduled. So it is oh, now... that's, we got sidetracked on that one, too. <laughs> I totally didn't really, got yes. So I'm just circling us back around again. I remember we're going to talk about that. It's a circular podcast today. We're just going around and around. So they are now scheduled to fight, and I want to make sure I get this right. Um, UFC 215 is when they're next scheduled to fight. So it's the next pay-per-view event after the John Jones uh, Cormier fight. Yes. Cyborg versus Tanya Evinger fight. So the very next pay per view. Do you know what's the date on that one again? I'm looking. Hold on. I thought I had it in my head, and now I don't see it. Keep talking. I so it, and it doesn't matter. We can. You, I mean, that's easy. Well, you, set, you talk a little bit about what you think. Is it going to? Is it going to be a different fight now because they've had this gap? Is it going to affect how that fight's going to look? I'm telling you, when this first came about I thought okay the first fight I didn't really give Shevchenko a chance and I remember being on my seat just like screaming like oh my god this woman is coming back uh she's about to win holy crap at the end of the fight I'm like if there's if there's if this was a championship fight she would have won that fight but uh Amanda Nunez ended up winning this time on the rematch, originally I was leaning toward Amanda Nunez winning, but after when I saw Shevchenko the week of the fight, and uh, you know they had the media day and she was sparring and things, the woman looks good. The woman is ready to go. I thought Amanda Nunez would be a little too big, a little too strong, but. Uh, after t- after seeing her, my my opinion changed to, I'm going to say this. I know Amanda Nunes has worked a lot on her stamina, but if this fight goes beyond two rounds, because, and, and I'm going to say this, there's a lot of fighters. When you get in the ring with Amanda Nunez, you better, I mean, figure out by hook or by crook, how the heck you're going to get out of those first two rounds. But if this fight goes beyond two rounds, I'm taking Shevchenko. Yes, I agree. And, and that's I- kind of hedging my bets because that's saying if it doesn't go beyond two rounds, I'm <laughs> right. taking Nunez. Right. And to go back to the date. So I, I said earlier that uh, Duranami and Renault was in Edmonton, but that's that's there the week before in Rotterdam, UFC Rotterdam. UFC 215 is September 9th in Edmonton. Okay. So I correct my mistake. The mistake has been corrected. All right. So is there anything else on this topic that you want to take? And give me, and I'll, I want to know who you're going to take in this, uh, you know, one, same question. 
Uh, does the date, the fact that this fight, if you, the first time, which is the second time when they were supposed to fight during international fight week, who are you taking? And then now that it's rescheduled, who are you taking and why? Well, I agree with you that if it does go past two rounds, you know, I think Amanda Nunez, um, this does give her more time though to work on her stamina. So, you know, that could be an advantage. I do feel a little bad for Shevchenko because, you know, she did, she said she was ready. She was ready for this fight. She'd been training and now she's, you know, you get this delay that can mess with your head a little bit. Well, not or only it can that, make her more determined, but. I worry, the, what I worry about with Shevchenko is this. I thought Shevchenko was at her personal best. This is the best I'd ever seen her fight. And I've seen practically every fight uh, of hers. Ever seen her fight or ever seen her look? Because you didn't see her fight. You know, I've, no, I've seen every single fight of hers but, that she's had. Right. Um, and I saw her sparring this time. Okay. That, thank uh, you. Or not necessarily sparring, but she was, uh, you know, she did the whole warm up thing for media day and she was hitting the pads and she looked amazing. Okay. And you look at you look at her body, and you can tell she's in really good shape. And she it's like she peaked at the right time. Pushing this fight back a month, two months, two months. And Shevchenko said she's you know she's not going to stop training. She's going to keep training, keep training. Well, there is a thing called overtraining, and that's the worry that I have. She had peaked right at the right time for the fight. I would have liked to see her, and I hope she did this, but she said she wasn't going to do this. I would have, with it being two months until the fight, I would have liked to see her take a week or two off, just rest the body up, and then get back to training. Of course, at the time, we didn't know when the next fight would be scheduled, so right. know, we don't know how that affected her decision-making for resting, not resting. Yeah, I w you know, I would have just taken immediately, uh, you know, Right after this, I would have just taken some time off and rested the body. I think that's the, that's the thing that I'm most worried about for Shevchenko is overtraining. Okay. Well, shall we, uh, shall we take our, our second commercial break and come back and talk about some more stuff? I think I'm willing to do that. All right. So when we come back, we are going to be talking a little bit about Invicta FC 24. All right. That sounds good. Anything else? I'm sure there is, but I don't want to give too much away. Excellent. We'll be back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. We're back. We are back. And what were we talking about again? Well, it sort of meandered a little bit. We started out talking about Amanda Nunez versus Valentina Shevchenko. That wasn't and will be. But and we then we jumped into Joanna Joe Jegcheck. Yes, we superstar, did. all-purpose guru, seat filler, superstar. I kind of want to be her when I grow up. My favorite. That's my girl. She's your favorite today because it seems like each show you have a different favorite. I have my she's, favorites in different weight classes. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's consistently one of my, my favorites. One of your favorites, that's right. You know, I don't even, you know, speaking of that, you know, that kind of segues right into uh, our next topic. Really? When we talk about my favorites, I've always talked about my two favorite fighters outside of the UFC was always Megan Anderson and Tanya Evinger. And now you have to change that. I have to change that because they're both now in the UFC. I never thought I would see Tanya. I don't, you know, I thought Tanya should have been in there from the beginning. But, uh, you know, Tanya and Megan are no longer in 
Invicta. Which made the Invicta FC24 card, just that thing got rearranged. It was like musical chairs in terms of fights. I mean, that thing got changed so many times. It's amazing they had a lineup. All because of my favorites. See, it's your fault. (laughs) You know what? I got to give Shannon and the rest of the crew over at Invicta some mad props. Uh, You know, when it starts out and Megan Anderson is supposed to be defending her, you know, her flyweight title. uh, And that's what they're going to build their event around. And... Oh, surprise. Jermaine Duranamy's been stripped. It's Cyborg versus Megan Anderson. So what is... But what, wait! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get a set of steak knives. Wait! <laughs> so the UFC says, you know what? Jermaine Duranamy's no longer a champ. It's now Cyborg versus Megan Anderson. So what does Shannon and the crew do? They circle the wagons. It's like, hey, Tanya Avenger's very first... Her, her first fight at flyweight. That's going to be the main event. And I'm a, and once he, featherweight. Sorry about that. The, the, uh, uh, the flyweight and featherweight always gets kind of screwy. I know me too, but, and I'm, I'm all excited about this and what is, what happens? But then this crazy situation with Megan, Megan's having some personal issues. She has to drop out of the fight. So what does UFC do? They swoop into good old Evicta again, plucks out their 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 favorite gem, their trusty gem of me of not Megan Anderson, but of the one they've had forever. That is Tanya Avenger. So then the city lost Megan. Then they have this whole new one. Now they lose Tanya, but they were still able to put together a pretty amazing card. And, you know, it would have been easy for Shannon and and Invicta to just say, you know what, this event is, is going to be canceled. We're going to reschedule it for another time. But they really held it together and they, they put together a, good sh- a, a great show. I agree. And I'm going to say one random thing because, you know, I always have to have some random comment about things. My question, though, the fights were great. But was there some sort of a rule that every fighter had to walk out to the most depressing slow music on the planet? I don't know how anybody was pumped up to fight. That was the calmest, slowest <laughs> intro music I have ever heard for the entire card. I don't recall that at all. I, you know, I, I maybe I just didn't pay attention. I can't remember any music that anyone walked out to. Was I not tweeting you enough saying, what is with this music? No, I, I apparently... <laughs> not tweeting, I, texting. Okay. Apparently, I wasn't paying attention. I do not remember the music being... Actually, I do remember someone coming out to kind of like... Uh, like, it wasn't... I was about to say Barry Manilow, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all very... I mean, I'm not saying... I said sad earlier, but it wasn't necessarily sad. It was just very mellow. And maybe that's, you know, that was the vibe they were they were picking up that night. Because yeah, they were coming but, to the ring, they were confident, and they were at peace. They were ready. They, these ladies were ready. ready to fight. Yeah, yeah. And so so that's, that's going to be my reason behind it. Um, but the card ended up turning out to be a nice card. Uh, the one fight that I was really looking forward to seeing, uh, because, you know, now that Tanya and Megan are no longer... Uh, you know, and Invicta, Jen Yu Fry was the person that I was kind of looking forward to seeing, and she was fighting Ashley Cummings. That was a fight that ended up being a really good fight. Um, so I was really looking forward to seeing that fight. I was um, interested with the with the results. I mean, it was a unanimous decision, but um, one judge had it thirty to twenty seven, and I just didn't see. I I, th- I thought Ashley did have a round. You know, the there the other ones were um, well, it was. That, no, two of them had 30, 27. No, never mind. You know what? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I, but, you know, speaking of that, though, there was... <laughs> I think I got my fights mixed up. I, I, I you apologize. You may, you may, but there was some, there was some interesting scoring where there was, there was some, some scoring that I was, I, I was just surprised at some of the judges scoring throughout the, the event. Yeah, but I as got a ahead whole, of myself. I was so excited to talk yes. about scoring. <laughs> and as a whole, though... Even though I may not have agreed with all of the scoring, I thought they got. I, I thought they had everything. All the fights ended up 
correct though. I, was mm-hmm. there any was there any fight on the card that you were uh, surprised over? No, not really. Um, I I know that the fight between um, let me make sure I get it right between help me out. Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to leave you hanging there, but uh, you're talking about uh, uh, Davis' daughter. No, uh, Felicia Spencer and Amy Coleman. Okay, yes. No, that was submission. Okay, so... <laughs> It'll come to me. Apparently, I need more caffeine. I, I think you do. I apologize okay. listeners because I am just losing at this segment. No, no, no. It's You're, you're totally fine. There's Matter of fact, when you're talking about fighters that I thought really put on a really impressive show, you know, you go through... Uh, I thought Jen Yu Fry did a really great job. Uh, Pan Sorensen really, sh- you know, really showed, uh, you know, how impressive she, I mean, that she put up an impressive uh, performance uh, with, a, you know, first round arm bar. Um, you know, there was, there was a number of really nice fights. I enjoyed the event. Anything, anyone or anything else you wanted to talk about with well, this Well, I realized one? what I was trying to remember, and it was actually UFC, not Invicta. So this oh, is what you... happens when I watch too much <laughs> MMA over the weekend. They all start to, like, like get to blur together in my head to where I, I want to talk about something, and I'm like, wait, wrong, wrong part. Listen, Invicta is, is, you know, even though they're losing fighters so fast, I, you know, I... I I feel like the the UFC is just just gutting uh, Invicta, and and you know that's the allure for fighters to go to Invicta because it is a pipeline directly into the UFC uh, for women's mixed martial arts. Uh, but you know, like when you look at Megan Anderson, she wins the title. She doesn't even really get a chance to defend the title before. Uh, You know, she's gone. There's been so many fighters that came through Invicta that's just been plucked out. But Invicta just keeps on keeps on chugging along. Uh, And I just have been impressed with as as they're getting as they're getting older and and figuring things out. One of my biggest complaints for Invicta once upon a time is if you have an event then you should be, when you're at that event, you should be promoting your next event. And they really, you know, they started doing that. Their production is is, has consistently improved. As a matter of fact, they even announced their next event, which will be coming up in August. August 31st. And the crazy thing is that it's, it's in California. It's not in Kansas City like it, it normally is. You know, but most of the fights are in Kansas City, so this one is going on the road. You know, they're they're coming back. I mean, Invicta used to do a number of fights here in uh, in California, uh, but then in recent in the last couple of years, they are they have been just locked into that Scottish Rites Temple, and uh, it's good to actually see them on the road and actually coming to California. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know, are you planning on going to that event? I was thinking about it. And it kind of depends on a couple things schedule wise. I got to figure out. Oh, I'm going to this event. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, and what's the main event right now? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> well, there's Sousa versus Escobel. I can say that. Uh, I'll, I'll say the second one, Kuniskaya. Oh, I was going to say Paul Louis. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's, if you pronounce both A's, it's P A apostrophe A and I. Um, sometimes you pronounce both syllables when or both vowels when there's an apostrophe like that. And Anna Kuniskaya, the, na- the reason why her name is uh, is familiar is because because uh, she's the one that actually had the controversial win over Tanya Evinger that was reversed. Right. And you know, before if if she if she'd have been on the card, and they wouldn't have had that rematch, I wouldn't have given her as much credit. But she gained so much uh, credibility with me on the rematch by losing to Tanya than she did when the ref. Because I just looked at the referee helped her when I mean not intentionally helped her, but you know because of uh, a, a misunderstanding of the rules, it ended up aiding her in in a unique submission with Tanya Tanya Evinger. But the rematch, she really. She really put it out there. She she proved that she deserves to be fighting for the title uh, against Tanya. She did a really great job, and I'm truly excited to to see her uh, fight 
in August uh, when it comes up here. And and I don't right. normally promote the, their events this early, but I am looking forward to seeing her fight against someone other than Tanya Evinger. And we should note that those are the both fights that we mentioned. They're both title fights. So uh, Bantamweight and Strawweight divisions are having title fights that night. So, yeah, because uh, so it's Bantam it's, it's going to be Bantamweight and Strawweight. Yes. And. I remembered what I wanted to say about Jin Yu Fry. What's that? It wasn't the scoring. It was those arm bars. Arm, yes. It was arm bar city. <laughs> Isn't that what the commentator kept yes. saying? Arm it, bar city. But the five arm bars she got out of. Yeah, I mean, it, it was an impressive fight. It, it was, that was a really, a really nice fight. Um, any comments on uh, the main event? Anything like that? I think. Uh, the main event was um, Mara Romero Barilla versus Milana Dudayeva. It was um, good on Dudayeva. Uh, d- d- um, <laughs> 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 wow! Uh, it was split decision, but um, Mara Romero Barilla uh, was declared the winner. I thought that that was the right decision. I thought it was a really good fight. It was close. You know, the, it could have really gone either way, but the, Mara pulled it out there. At the, I would agree. I, you know what, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, uh, Buvarella. I just Barella. Barella. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of her fights. You know, that's what I was saying about Invicta. That you know they lost their stars, but they brought in a brand new crap crop of stars. That you know, even though their big names are gone, there's a lot of fighters that were on this particular card that I'm like, man, I look forward to seeing these guys again. So as much as the UFC keeps plucking, they keep filling, refilling the cupboard. So, uh, and that they was... are, they're going everywhere to refill because uh, this was the most international fight. <laughs> it was, it was really cool to see all of the different nationalities represented in this, you know, all the different languages spoken, all the flags. It was very cool. But that's the thing that that's the, the credit I'm giving Invicta is the fact that Invicta is expanding and growing and that shows that they're expanding and growing because they're plucking fighters out from all over, you know, all over the world from not just not just US fighters, but fighters in South America, Central America, uh, Europe. Uh, I mean, they're pu- they're pulling in some quality fighters. So I was really impressed by that as well. So, I mean, I got to I got to give uh, Shannon some serious credit. Speaking of fighters, I mean, uh, you know, organizations and things, um, another organization that I've always been a big fan of that is growing, uh, and I know you don't watch a lot of uh, One Championship, but One Championship announced that they are going to do a huge expansion and really focus on uh, expanding into into Asia, which is a, uh, One Championship is Asia's largest organization. They're they're the UFC of of Asia, and uh, it's one it's it's one of my favorite organizations. I, I would probably say if I was going to rank organizations right now, you know, UFC and Bellator is one and one and two, and then it is a very tight fit between Invicta and One Championship as my second favorite organization it's it's like a tie between those two i love watching one championship and the fact that they're going to be expanding uh further into china and in the japan um which means they're going to you know they're gonna they're gonna add a lot more fighters they have i think one of the most talented fighters uh in mixed martial arts as their Adam Weight champion, which I've always wanted the UFC to add, and that is who's my favorite? Uh, Angela one, Lee. Angela Lee. Angela Lee is, I if you know if being here in the, in, in the U.S., uh, it's funny, but she's an American fighter, uh, Asian descendant from she's from Hawaii, but you know go online and watch some of Angela Lee's fight, and I'm not talking about KGB Lee, I'm talking about Angela Lee from One FC. Yes, that did rhyme. That did rhyme. Wasn't now, intending to do that. Uh, on that same note, it they they are expanding and they are planning to hold as many as, according to this one headline, thirty events in twenty eighteen. That's yeah. a lot of events. <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're going they're doubling. I think uh, 
I think this year, by the time they're done, I I think they're going to do about 18 events this year, and then they're going to jump to eight to about 30 uh, next year. Do you know if that's true? If I'm if I'm right yeah, on it says that, as many as 30 in 2018. So yeah, so I, I'm not sure about this year's number, but yeah, and I will watch every single one of them. Uh, and that's an organization that really focuses uh, that you know have a very strong focus on women's uh, mixed martial arts. Yes. So, so when we come back, we have one more segment. Do you have anything to say about One uh, FC? I know you don't watch a lot of One FC, but I know but... Angela Lee, and I, I I think she's amazing. I don't know a lot about it. Uh, I will probably learn more if they're going to have that many events. <laughs> you know, and they really do a great job. I mean, it's 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 impressive. So uh... it makes me glad I'm not on the men's MMA podcast because then I I'd, I'd, I'd have to learn even more names. <laughs> yes, no, I definitely. <laughs> I that to you. So when we come back, we have one more topic to cover, and then we're going to wrap things up. Uh, stay tuned, and we will be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Okay, we're now into our final segment, and what are we going to talk about? Well, we uh, we were going to wrap it up, and then we realized that uh, my confusion earlier reminded us that we had more to talk about, and we had to talk about <laughs> UFC uh, Fight Night, uh, in the one that was in Glasgow. It is crazy that we almost forgot that bad boy. I'm telling you, I watched so much MMA last weekend that my brain just kind of I mean, froze up. When you when you think about it with me, I mean, I watched... I believe. Yeah, you watched it even more than I did. Let's see. I watched the uh, Dana White's uh, Contender Series. I watched the UFC event. I watched the Bellator event. I watched the Invicta event. I, I think I watched Bam. And then there was another promotion. Um, there was an Asian, another Asian promotion that I watched. See, now I feel even worse for, for getting my fights mixed up because I watched, you know, like a quarter of what you watched. <laughs> I watched. Or an eighth of what you watched <laughs> and I still got them confused, but. Yes, I watched, I watched a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, speaking of one championship, I even went back and watched a one champ, a previous one championship event as well. I have. I need a 12-step program. Your commitment to your craft is impression, impressive. <laughs> impression, yes. That's what it is. <laughs> so at any rate, what I was thinking of earlier when I was talking about Invicta was I was actually thinking of the Glasgow fight between Joanne Calderwood and Cynthia Calvillo. And that it was a very close fight, but that uh, Cynthia Calvillo did win it. And Joanne Calderwood... Uh, I think was a little upset about that, that she felt like she probably won that fight. Okay. First off. And it when, sucks when you lose in your hometown. Yes. I and mean, that's, that's, and it's, all, it's always tough. Um, I would never fight at home. I always have this whole thing where it's like, do not go home and fight. You just have too, there's too much pressure. Uh, you know, you're always, you're, you're forced to press because you want to, Look impressive in front of your friends and family. Too many have, distractions. There's with just those way too family. many distractions. I've never been a fan of a fighter going home and fight. Stay away from home. And, and there's there's a lot of exceptions. There's there's examples of fighters really you know blowing it by you know trying to do too much. But this wasn't the case. First off, both of these fighters, when you look when you just look at these two fighters, you don't really. You know, I never look at Joanne Calderwood and say, 
there as a fighter. You don't look at her as a fighter at all, but she's a real, she's the real deal. This woman is as tough and as active as you can get. Uh, you know, she has, she has proven herself time and time again. Uh, she has kind of a bit of a mousy voice. I was going to say, she's so soft-spoken. It just makes me think like she should be in a, a, a movie plot because she's yes. so soft-spoken and the bullies would be picking on her and then she would just kick the snot out of her. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would not want to be a bully that would walk in and mess with Joanne Calderwood because the woman, she throws punches and bunches. Her combinations are crisp and, and, and really on point. Uh, every time I see her, she's getting better and better and better. And then she was in the ring with what I'm going to call the freak. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to call her the spider monkey. She, I always, I, you know, I don't even call her by her name. I'm like the, the spider monkey. This woman, and let everybody know who I'm talking about. Cynthia Calvillo. All I can do, whenever I see, like, Cynthia Calvillo... She said it better than, you know, I, it's the perfect description of her fighting style. When she's on the mat, she feels like she's a shark in the ocean. I, it's a, it's a thing of beauty watching, watching this woman fight on the ground. Now, the one thing with this fight that I thought Joanne Carterwood did a really good job of is staying off the mat. Second round, they didn't even go to the mat once. I couldn't Not figure once. out what, what was going on with Calvillo's corner and Calvillo. And I was like, come on, you've got to take her down. I mean, you kick butt on the ground. That was, I mean, in my opinion, that all came down to Joanne Calderwood's uh, footwork. I thought mm -hmm. she, I, I, she fought a, a pretty good fight. Um, an imp impressive, like an impressive strategy. The only thing, uh, you know, when you look at the first round, I had her I had her winning the first round up until the last minute mm -hmm. where Calvillo took her to the ground and you could tell it was a massive uh difference in fighters. She was literally saved by the bell because Literally saved by the bell. She would have been choked out, I think, had the bell not sounded. And you know, if it wasn't for that last thirty seconds of that round, I give round one to Joanne Calderwood. And this and I can understand why Joanne Calderwood was upset about losing the fight. Mm -hmm, Cuz I'd say she won round 2. Yes. I here's the thing. I will go as far as to say that with the exception of a minute and a half of all three I mean of of the fight, uh Joanne I had Joanne with a slight edge over her uh throughout the fight. But she lost the first round because of what happened in the last 30 seconds of the fight. I mean, of that round. I thought a close, uh, by close decision, round two, it was totally stand up. And, but it was very close, but I had Carter Wood winning that round as, uh, round, that round. So I had it one round to one. And then it rolled into round three. And, you know, Calderwood was throwing combinations, you know, moving. And she was, in my book, she was clearly winning round three. The big difference is she was, she wasn't winning rounds by, she wasn't dominating the rounds by a large margin. So once again, with like 30 to 45 seconds in the, left in the fight, she gets taken to the ground you got the great white shark in the water <laughs> and it's just like she she eats her alive in the water and she she loses she loses that round at the very end of the fight i mean at the very end of the round at the end of the fight which gave me two rounds to one on my score scorecard and i had you know this you know this phenom of you know just only her this was was her fifth fight Yes, I this is so. her fifth fight. Fifth or sixth? No, I think was this was her, five and zero. Oh? Yeah, maybe, may, maybe this is her, this was her sixth fight. This woman is climbing the ranks fast. She's scary. Uh, she's Khabib scary. You know when I and and that's and I always say, 
uh, you know, when I look at Conor McGregor and I and I say, you know, Conor can in my book, Conor can keep doing everything he's doing. Just stay away from Khabib. Uh, well, she's scary like that. Uh, Khabib and her, when you get on the ground, uh, you know, they're just both of them are like freak of nature. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is when you look at, uh, at her, uh, Cynthia Covia, and she walks to the ring, she's so comfortable. This woman has five fights and, 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 a, and an impressive, you know, she's, she had a long, she had some amateur fights and, and things, but she's super comfortable. She's been on the biggest stage and it hasn't phased her, uh, which makes it so that when she gets to the, you know, Calderwood was the first big name that she fought, that she's fought, but there's her next fight's going to be bigger. And the next one, you know, with five, with this being her sixth fight, I, I, I honestly could make us make a case that she's, she's two fights from fighting Joanna Joe Jacek. That's how close within, that's how fast she's moving up the rank. And that's how impressive she's been. Um, this is a setback for Calderwood, but, uh, She's 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 a tough fighter and she has a chance to really make a mark uh on the strawweight division as well. Uh what's your take? Uh, she's impressive. I mean, I thought it was a great fight. I thought the one judge had it um 30 to 27 and I I didn't agree with that. But Who did you have when it first up because the rounds were so close. They were close, but I did have I did have Calvillo winning just because of those incredibly impressive takedowns and how she dominated on the ground and I I think Joanne dominated when they were standing up but not to the extent that it outweighed that yeah, that's kind of my that my take game. so so you do agree with the decision I do the, the other thing that I was impressed but I can understand why Calderwood would be upset and think that she won and you know I oh mean, yes I could totally see you know as a matter of fact I was worried for Calvia I'm like wait a minute you are going to you're going to Europe to fight a European fighter in her home country, you know, and you're 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 still in rounds at the very end. Uh, if that fight would have been scored the opposite, two rounds to one for Calderwood, you know, I'd be disappointed, but I wouldn't have been shocked. Right. So I can understand why she was she was upset. I absolutely understand. Did you want to talk about the other women's fight on that? It was on the the early card. On oh, the early prelims, there was another fight, and it was you know it was it was interesting. Uh, who give me the names? I can't not remember the names. It was yet. Leslie Smith versus Amanda Lemos. Okay, and it was a second round TKO. Absolutely. Okay, here's the thing that I was really impressed with when it comes to this fight. Um, when the fight started out. You know, I looked around and I was watching. I was watching the fight, um, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Amanda, Amanda Amanda Smith. Lemos. Amanda no, Lemos. Leslie yes, Smith, Amanda, Amanda, Lemos. Amanda, 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 Amanda Lemos. She had amazing footwork. She, you could tell she. I mean, she started out as a boxer. It was there was no mistaking the fact that she was a boxer. Uh, she was firing shots at angles. You know. Uh, you know, I, one of the mistakes I think she had was she, oh, she constantly kept her guard down, uh, which early in the fight was not an issue. She was, you know, because she, she was she was landing shots. But the thing with Leslie Smith, if anyone's seen Leslie Smith fight, Leslie Smith is this little tiny bulldozer. Uh, and she's just going to keep on plowing forward and keep on going forward and keep on going forward. And, uh, you know. What happened was, uh, Lemos, she ended up running out of gas. And you cannot, with a fighter like uh, Leslie Smith, Leslie Smith is going to keep on applying the pressure. Uh, she ran out of the gas, and then... She uh, just looked exhausted. She was sort of, it was almost like she was laying on the... Yeah, she can, <laughs> at the end, by, the, by the second round, she wasn't able to defend herself. And Leslie Smith, that's like a bulldozer, just plowed her on over. Yep. It was a good fight. It was a great card. Uh, I, you know, I because there was so much going on that week. Um, I really wasn't that excited about this card and man, I was, I mean, by the end I was just, you know, I loved it. You know, the Gunnar Nelson fight, everything. It was a great card. Uh, and for women's mixed martial arts, 
both fights were definitely worth watching. So uh, I was super, I was super just pleased with this card. Anything else we're going to add? Have we missed anything? We probably have, and we'll get notes from people saying, (laughs) you didn't talk about this, but uh, I think maybe it's time to wrap this puppy up. Hey, I am with you. We we ran a little over today, but... A little? Just just a little bit, just just, just a smidget, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, We plan on having a a lot more, uh, you know, shows and not have such a huge gap that the biggest reason why has just been, like I said, uh, the health issues that I've, I've been running into, uh, which hopefully are behind me, but, uh, we definitely plan on having a lot more events, uh, a lot more shows covering a lot more events. Uh, once again, I'm Tate. I'm Sarah. Thank you. And to all, a good night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Network, from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.